What's up world and welcome to Nuxtux Entertainment. My name is Jonathan and I'll be your host for this video tutorial series. Now as you might have read from the title, today I'll be showing you 5 tips and tricks for a better faster workflow when using Blender for video editing. So let's get right to it. The first thing I want to show you is how to set your resolution without necessarily affecting your frame rate. Now if you've watched any of my previous tutorials, I did mention this where when you set your resolution from the dimensions up here, what can happen is let's say for example you had your frame rate to 29.96 something 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 and your footage resolution is actually 720p. So when you go and select the preset for 720p it also changes the frame rate right here as you can notice. So to show you a quick way of avoiding this so I'll set this back to 1080p for this example. So I'll go ahead and import my footage here and I'll select the speedster 720p. See, I'll check use movie frame rate. And there you have it. The frame rate now changed to 29.96 point something something, which is basically 29.97. All right. So if I scroll down here in this side menus, right here, this properties menus, if you want, in the edit strip, down here, the original dimension is 1280 by 720, which is not what we have up here. But again, if you go ahead and switch it from the presets, you might set it to the right value and forget to change the frame rate afterwards. In order to avoid this, what you can do, simply select the video file, go down to strip, and up here you have set render size. And there you go, the render size has now been set automatically, basically, without affecting the frame rate. Now, on the flip side, if ever, for example, let's say you had chosen HDV 1080p, notice one particular thing. The aspect ratio here has changed from 1 1 to 4, 3. So if you were to, for example, select the video file, go down to strip and set render size, it seems a bit off, doesn't it? That's because with this option, Blender doesn't change the aspect ratio automatically. Also, the frame rate changed because we set it to the HDV 1080p. So I'll set this back to 29.97 and I'll set these two back to one. And there you have it. It's fixed. But typically you're not going to go and select this just out of the blue. So this is simply a tip after the trick. Tip number one, setting your render resolution without affecting your frame rate. Moving on to tip number two. Now tip number two is selecting your strips. Faster, better selecting of your strips. Now for this one, I'm going to go inside of my add-ons here and down into the sequencer add-ons, I'm going to check on the KineRaw tools, which again comes by default with Blender 2.79, is compatible with Blender 2.78, and also by default also comes with Blender 2.79A and 2.79B. And if you don't have it, you can always go and download it from the Blender add-ons page, which I showed you how to access in a previous tutorial. So you can always check that out. I'll have a link to it in the description below. But okay, the reason why I'm going to turn this on is because it adds a few extra features, which are quite useful and well it's quite intuitive so let's go ahead and turn this on we get some extra options which i'm going to uncheck the jump to cut panel because i do not use it also you can look at the hotkeys that this adds for you which are very useful i'll tell you that much these hotkeys by default right there activated with the kinora tools are very useful so okay now if you're just turning this on don't forget to save user settings when you're done checking this box I'm going to leave these two off for now because we're not going to get into their features. So tip number two is the selection option. So to illustrate this, I'm going to cut this into little pieces. Yeah, that should do it. Okay. And I'll reset my frame range. All right. So down here in select, you get a few very useful options. So let's say for example, that your project was humongous. So I'll go ahead and make this humongous very quickly. I'll speed this up for you. Okay, so there you have it. Now this is quite large. This is quite a lot of segments and fragments of the same footage, but just to elaborate. Now, tip number one when it comes to selection. Let's say you want to select everything that's here on the right. And you don't want to do a box select because you have to zoom out and zoom in and do all of that. And you just want to snap everything to this strip right here. Well, simply place your mouse cursor anywhere before the first strip that you would like to select here. Go down to select. And now this comes from the Kinara tool, which gives you the option to select any strip after the current frame, for example. And it would select all of these on the right side. Or you can use 
the option that comes by default with blender which is select all strips to the right or all strips to the left or all strips on the same channel for that you'd have to select something on a channel and then select all strips on the same channel and as you can see all the strips that are on channel 2 because this is what channel this is on are now selected if you look at it they're all selected it's pretty neat or again as i said you could always go to select all strips to the right for example and all of these strips will be selected. Now what's nice about the option that comes by default with Blender is that it automatically deselects all of the strips that do not fit the criteria of strips to the right. What I mean by that is if you had these two strips selected here you know, with the time cursor all the way there you were to select all strips to the right these two are no longer selected. So Blender will understand that you don't want anything else but the strips to the right to be selected. Pretty neat huh? In counterpart, these options from the Kinera tools, if you were to say um, after current frame, for example, these strips are still selected. So that's the difference between the Kinera tools selection and the default selection tools from Blender. You can also select your strips by type, as you can see down here. So if I wanted to select all of my audio strips, I simply go to sound, and now all of the sound strips are selected. Now, again, this option right here to select by type is a feature available thanks to the Kinera tools add-on. The downside with that is if you forget to unselect your other strips, well, they stay selected. So simply press A to deselect, go back to select all by type, sound, and there you go. Only your audio strips are selected. So these are some very interesting features that Blender offer to you right here and there. Now, the last one that I'm going to show you for the select options is if I were to select these two strips right here and they're the only two strips that you don't want to affect. Simply go down to select and up here you have inverse or you can use the keyboard shortcut control I and what this does is going to inverse your selection. So if I click on this everything that wasn't previously selected is now selected and everything that was selected is no longer selected as you can see. These are some very useful functions that Blender offers right there and as obvious as they may be, it's easy to pass them by without noticing. Now for tip number three, which is a feature that comes with the Kinera tool, which is a quick fade, or rather fade in, fade out, made quickly, which you also get with the quick functions, but not getting into this right now. So it's pretty easy. Select the video strip that you would like to add the fade in or fade out to and simply go down to strip and then right here you have the fade which you can select fade in, fade out or both. And then even after selecting it you can toggle through the different options. You can select the duration of your fade so in my case I'll say 35 frames and this right here the amount is referring to the opacity. As you can see here, the max opacity is one. And what that means is if you were to set this to a lower value, for example, 0.8, then the max opacity of this strip will now be 0.8. Not something that you can't undo, but let me just go ahead and show you. So if I press OK, as you can see now, it turns green because it's been keyframed. If I place the sequencer cursor in the middle of it, the opacity goes up to 0.8 and stops. And on each of the edges, well, it fades in and fades out. So to undo this very quickly, simply put this value back up to 1, right click, and then clear keyframes. And there you have it. So generally, unless you're going to overlay a video strip or image strip over something else, you'll want to set this to 1 so it can be max opacity. And simply set the duration of your fade in and fade out or both. And there you have it. It adds it very quickly. So you don't really have to calculate the frames for yourself. There you have it. Tip number four, adding media to your sequencer. Now this might seem like an easy one, an obvious one, but the Kinera tools actually offers an alternative way of doing this, or rather a somewhat more intuitive way of doing it. Depends on your preferences. So I'll go ahead and navigate to the folder that has my media. And there you have it. These are the three different medias that I'll be using. Now down here in the add, you get the option to recursive load from browser. From the active file browser that you have in Blender, whichever folder it's in, you can import all of these so it would import all of them. Or alternatively, you can import by the selected extension. So if I were to say mp4, since all of these are mp4, and say OK, all of my mp4 files are now imported. So this is a very, I don't know, useful tip or trick do with it as you please last but not least tip number five 
For those of you who work with motion tracking or masking, I'll open a side window here and switch it over to movie clip editor. Normally you would have to go and search for your same media to open it inside of the movie clip editor in order to create your mask or whichever. Now with the KinoRaw tools, you have two new ways of going about this that are a lot quicker and somewhat more effective. The first one is you can simply select the video file or image sequence that you would like to import into your movie clip editor and you can simply click on input this little button here only shows up when you have the KinoRaw tool enabled and you can create movie clip strip or you can say open with editor if I click on open with editor as you can see it automatically opens it inside of the movie clip editor which is quite intuitive right the other option here which is create movie strip is almost the same option as once you have a movie strip up here you can simply press shift a go to clip and open a movie clip the same one that you've opened here already all right alternatively if you're not interested in opening it from the sequencer or rather from the input button right up here inside of clip the KinoRaw tool gives you this extra option here which is the open active strip. So as you can see I have my GS publicity right here selected. So I'll simply go to clip, open active strip and there you have it. The active strip is now open. Now of course they're not synced up because there's an offset here. If you would consider that this starts at, if I select this, it starts at frame 3005. So to fix this, you can simply go into your side menu here, go down to footage setting and set the start frame to match that of the start frame in your sequencer. And there you have it. Or alternatively, you can go down to input. So let's do this with the speedster footage right here. Input and open with editor. And of course, take into consideration the start frame, start frame 3874. And there you have it. Pretty neat. So the KinoRaw tool creates this connection between the movie clip editor and the sequencer. Alright, that's it for today. These were my 5 tips and tricks for Blender and video editing. So if you learned anything new today or like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If not, there's a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? Anyhow, my name is Jonathan, this is Nuxtux Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.